right so today in the video we're gonna we're gonna fashion a uh, electric uh, electronic choke now um, the uh, the carburetor that I have on this uh, this car is a uh, Weber DCOE 45 they don't have a choke per se they have what they call a um, a starting circuit um, so basically it's just a little lever just like a choke but instead of a, a, a traditional choke where you have a plate that's in um, making the mixture rich um, it has a little extra jet in a starting circuit that adds more fuel during the during the starting phase uh, when you when your engine is cold and you need to richen up the fuel mixture <clears throat> so um, the traditional way of doing that is just to put a, um, a, a cable that, you know, run through the firewall and then you have this extra cable for a choke um, that you can pull when you need to cold start the car. Um, in this case, we're not going to do that. We're going to have, um, we've got a auxiliary switch from Moss Motors and we're just going to turn the button on and make the choke go on. So uh, these are available. They, uh, the 77 MGB has a, um, a blank spot in, in the dashboard, so we're going to use that. Here's a part number for those uh, if you want to buy them on Moss, 141-405. Uh, uh, and they fit right into the dash where normally you would have a blank. And in this case, we're going to have a choke. So you can put it in choke mode, and then when you, when you flip that switch, um, it will eventually... Um, activate this solenoid that will push some linkage which we're going to make some custom linkage with some wire here um, and that will that will move that uh, that starting circuit on on the Weber uh, one of the other things that we're going to go over is um, isolating a switch with a um, with a relay relays are uh, a really great practice uh, the idea behind a relay is you take a, a low voltage circuit and uh, when you close that um, a small um, magnet in there will close the, the high load circuit. It's not necessarily the low voltage, it's the amperage. And what we want to isolate is the amperage that's used to run this little solenoid here. <clears throat> um, and uh, we're going to run this, this one off the green circuit and this one off the white circuit um, in, the, uh, in the wiring diagram. When you're looking at the wiring diagram uh, on the car, you can notice on here that the white wires come off of the ignition right up here. And, and they go um, into the fuse box and they're fused to the green wire. So the, the green and the white wires are essentially the same circuit. N neither one of them have power unless the ignition is on. And we want that to be the case because we don't want to drain the battery if we forget to leave the choke on. If the ignition's off, then the then this will also be off, um, and uh, we're going to connect that through a relay or through a um, yeah through a little relay here, uh, and then we'll isolate this circuit from the switch circuit, and that'll also um, protect this switch from getting worn because you know every time you start your car, pretty much you're going to put the choke on, and then once it's running, you turn it off. So that I don't want to wear out that switch with uh, uh, a lot of amperage going all the way through from the switch to this device. Um, so we're just going to run it through this, uh, this little relay and that'll activate this off of another circuit and then we'll, we'll be golden. Um, so uh, in a previous video, uh, when I did the linkage for uh, the Weber DCOE, uh, I made this little aluminum bracket. Um, and I've gone ahead and uh, I, I had planned on doing this when I made that bracket and I made it extra long so that I could, uh, you know, uh, make some mounting holes uh, to put this baby on. It'll go. Whoops. <laughs> It'll go something like this, right? So um, the uh, the screws will come down here. One of these wires will be uh, grounded to the, to the screw right here, and then the other wire will go to the relay. The other, the opposite will go to the circuit uh, to the the fuse box. Uh, and that's that's the plan anyway. Um, so um, this is just a standard piece of uh, uh, angle iron. Uh, of course, it's a can't have a piece of aluminum in my in my engine bay without polishing it with a nice luster. Um, 
And so what, what we did on here was I, I basically laid out this template and found where the holes are and then I transcribed those holes onto here so that I could make um, you know the holes that will match up in here. So uh, let's go ahead and get busy um, into the engine bay and we'll start setting this up um, so that we can get into um, the physical connections and then we'll get into the wiring connections and I'll go over how um, how these uh, relays work. It's it's really really good to know um, how to run a relay. Anytime you want to put any kind of an auxiliary device on your car, it's always good to do it with a relay so you can isolate the circuits. All right, let's get started. All right, so um, this is the underside of the bracket here. Uh, one of the things that um, you're probably going to want to make sure of is that the screws don't ever come off. Uh, engines have a lot of uh, heat variation, they have a lot of vibration, and uh, these screws are going to be underneath and not accessible. You won't be able to tighten them uh, if they, you know, or check them on a regular basis. So all I want to do is put a little bit of uh, Loctite red in here just to make sure that I don't ever have to mess with these screws again. So let's go ahead and get these Loctited in there. Um, the uh, individual screws are um, I'm not going to tighten them down real tight until I got all four of them in there, um, just to make sure that we don't, you know, have any. We can give it a little bit of play in case any of the the holes aren't completely lined up. I'm putting a lot on there, just enough to get on the threads. I'm going to make a mess. These are a number seven metric screw. Uh, this uh, solenoid was purchased on Amazon. It's a Chinese made solenoid. Um, and uh, so consequently everything is metric on it. So uh, one more thing that's a mix between, you know, imperial and, and metric. Now the only other thing is the, the length of these screws. You just need to make sure that they don't um, go too deep and touch any of the insulator. And you can see we got exactly the right size screw. It stops right at the top. So make sure you find the right size screw when you're doing this, if you end up doing this. There you go. All right, let's move into the engine bay. All right, so here you can see got the um, little bracket mounted in place. It's got two little screws that go into the intake manifold right there. Um, I have free range of motion. Everything's good here. Um, you can see right there I've got the negative um, on, on this post right here. So that'll ground right to the engine. And I've uh, already installed a uh, little nipple connector on the end of uh, the positive lead right there. Now, um, what you'll notice here is I've taken all the linkage and everything off from the throttle cable right here, so that needs to go in next. Um, and once I get that together, uh, then we can get started working on, um, I think next we'll do is the, uh, the mechanical connection between this and this right here. I think just like a, a little U-shape bracket so they can connect the two together. Um, and then we'll just, this doesn't take a whole lot of power and this has the same amount of travel. Um, when I purchased this online um, at Amazon.com, um, I did a search for uh, electrical solenoids and uh, I needed it to be uh, 12 volts DC um, and I needed to have this much travel. So what I did was I measured the distance that this needs to move and I ordered um, one that will travel that far. And uh, so that's that's where we're going with that. Um, I'll provide for you the uh, the part number that we purchased online. There, there might be other manufacturers that make similar products. 
Um, it's really inexpensive. And uh, of course the piece of aluminum just at the local um, big box uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. And um, so that's really inexpensive too. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's get this, this throttle linkage in place, get it all adjusted, and then we'll get started on this physical connection right here. Okay, there you go. All the linkage is all connect, connected. Let's see if we can get a good look at it from here. So we got a, so a little, what I used was a little piece of um, bra uh, brazing rod. So it's a, a really firm uh, piece of metal. It's not a very malleable piece of uh, wire or something. It's a nice firm piece of metal. The, um, the piece that goes in right there on the um, on the carburetor that that has a hole in it to take a piece of cable um, and all I did was take that wire and made it just a little bit thinner so that it could get into that hole and that way can be can use that whole mechanism the uh, we wanted to uh, bypass this section so I had to put an elbow in it right there so that when uh, when you activate it it doesn't it doesn't interfere and likewise we need to get the right kind of clearance to go so that it won't bump into this edge here either so now when we uh, activate that solenoid we'll have a choke so let's go ahead and uh, get started on these electrical connections here um, we'll get the uh, um, the switch into the dash and we'll install a relay. I think I'm going to plug it in around one of these little holes right here and uh, Let's get it. Let's go ahead and get started on that All right, so the uh, the easy part here is just to run some wires through the dash went through the firewall. There's uh, um, I'm actually running these along the same uh, grommet hole where the speedometer cable goes um, Anyway, I just picked a blue wire because there's not that many blue wires elsewhere uh, in I didn't want it to get confused with anything that's in there um, so I have these blue wires and uh, switch is pretty easy just on or off it doesn't matter which way you go uh, continuity wise um, these little connectors that I have uh, don't have little rubber boots so I'm going to be putting some uh, electrical tape around them just to make sure that nothing touches um, inside there um, you know just kind of a safety thing uh, another little tip um, is when you're when you're crimping um, after you're done crimping give it a little tug and see if uh, if you got a good strong crimp this one here is a crimp that I did where I gave it a little tug and it came off uh, you don't want that to happen um, in operation you want them to make sure they're snug so give just give them a little tug before you put them into uh, into service and if you have a failure like this just throw another one on there um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, some tape on here and I'll jam that back in now when you're looking at these auxiliary switches you can see that there is an off this is the off um, uh, mode and this is the on mode so the on mode kind of looks neutral but it's actually intended to be off in this position so you can just push it down or push it back in I have the same kind of thing with the hazard lights when they're off they're they're flush at the top and and sticking out at the bottom same same way with the hazard switch this is the off mode that's the on mode all right so you can see I'm just going to validate or verify that the switch is in the right position um, it's installed and I've got my ohmmeter connected to the opposite side of the wires on the other side of the firewall in the on mode and off so I have a switch okay so on the hot side of these wires um, we got one red one for the for the primary uh, that's going to call the high amperage side and the blue is the switched wire that goes uh, to the dash where we have the auxiliary switch these are both going to go into the green circuit which is um, you see right here it comes off of the fuse box and the white circuit feeds through a fuse creates the green circuit now you can see this little this little switchy thing here um, this is the green circuit I'm going to put this on here okay and what we're doing is we're adding one of these 
This is um, a little do little doohickey that uh, allows you to plug two um, connectors into one, um, and uh, it just makes it a little easier for you to uh, instead of having to splice the wire. If you have access to the end, you can just create a, another little tab right there. And so this wire that we just made, these are the both of the hot wires. They're going to come off of that, and it will be fused behind this fuse right here. Um, now on this wire, instead of using electrical tape, we're going to go ahead and uh, um, cover this up with some uh, heat shrink, and because I don't want to have this big exposed area of um, positive um, electricity, you know, I don't want to have that available for it to spark out somewhere. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, shrink this up with a heat with the heat gun, and then we'll put that in there, and then we can continue on and install the relay. All right, so you have it. All the wires all lined up. You have uh, this right here is uh, 85, I believe. 85 is the ground wire. You see, I've got a nice black wire for that. It has a, a loop on the end that I will connect to the screw that will ultimately screw this into the firewall. The the blue wire finishes that circuit. You can see you got one here and one on the other side. This is the switched circuit. This is what energizes the relay. Now, on the other side here, you can see um, this is this this one right here is 87, and that goes to the load. You can see it goes over here and and eventually goes to the solenoid. And uh, number 30 is unswitched to the battery. Well, not actually unswitched because it doesn't actually go to the battery. It goes to the ignition circuit so it's switched at the um, at the key but uh, the the reason why they use these numbers and I'll I'll, I'll run over the um, how these relays work and what the numbers mean um, but number 30 is um, your your main power source these um, these other ones these are for uh, triggering the relay in there that closes that circuit all right so let's go ahead and get this thing installed here's another Quick look at the diagram. I don't know if you can get a good, good look at that. But um, that's that's how the relay works. Let's go ahead and get this thing uh, mounted on the firewall and give it a good test. All right, there we go. Uh, all the wires are all hooked up. I've got the battery turned on. I've just turned on the ignition. Here I am testing the switch. There you go. So there is a electrically actuated, um, I guess you could call it a choke. Um, for the Weber, it's called a starter circuit. Um, let me just do one more test just to make sure that you can see uh, that when the ignition is off, the switch will also be turned off. So I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm gonna pull the key from the car and you'll see how it's connected to the uh, ignition circuit. Okay, so this is on. And this is the key off. There you go. All right, so um, I will do a quick follow-up video on um, how to wire a relay and what all the wires mean on the, or, or the numbers uh, on the bottom of a relay switch. Uh, some minor idiosyncrasies with uh, some of the output options on those to be aware of. Um, but hopefully this is a, a really great um, uh, example of how to, to use some automation, a little tricky wiring to get away with something uh, without having to uh, mess up your car with all kinds of uh, choke cables and whatnot makes a, a choke a lot cleaner you just put it on the dash and um, all right so uh, that's what I'll have for you for today uh, make sure that uh, if you like these videos uh, that you subscribe share with your friends if you have any comments about anything that we talked about today please feel free um, I answer all my comments if you have anything that you want me to see in the future uh, I'd be I'd be glad to showcase something if you have a request all right have a good day